Hi, everyone. I'm going to begin the program now. Firstly, welcome to Central Park. My name is Ian and I work for the Central Park Conservancy. If you don't know about us, we are the nonprofit that manages Central Park. So basically, we keep the park clean and green. Unfortunately, it is difficult for many people to make it to Central Park right now. So we here at the Conservancy want to bring the park to you through this series of weekly walks. You can join us every Wednesday at 12.30 p.m. for a lunchtime stroll through the park. And today we will be visiting Tupelo Meadow in the Ramble. We'll be together for about 15 minutes and all the photographs you'll see were taken by myself this past week. And I've added a few historical images from our own archives, uh, the New York City Parks Department archives, the Museum of the City of New York's Digital Archives and the New York Public Library as well. So thank you for that. Before we begin, just a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, I wanna begin with an announcement first and foremost. Um, we've listened to your feedback and we have changed the registration project uh, process for the future. So today you signed up for um, online, you registered and you received a link. You'll have to do that one more time so for next week's walk, if you'd like to attend, you can register the same way you registered here. Uh, my colleagues will drop a link in the chat, but what has changed is that once you do that, you are good. You are subscribed. You'll get an email every week with the link to uh, join the Zoom. So you won't have to input your email on our website uh, every week. Once you do it once, you're all set for all of our future weekly walks and it has become a series now instead of separate events. So thank you for your feedback. And I hope that this makes it easier so you can just, um, get a reminder and attend every week. And once again, my colleagues will drop that message in the chat so it's clear. And moving on, I wanted to invite you to use the chat feature if you haven't. Uh, we love to see your comments and you can, you can uh, say hello um, using that feature. And you can also ask questions to my colleagues who are on the back end using the Q&A feature. And for all of you that have attended our weekly walks, you'll know we also do some polls during the, the, the tour. And I'll, I'll do one now. If you haven't attended, there, you'll, know, you'll see that something has popped up on your screen. And we just like to get an idea of who is visiting our weekly walks. It's very helpful for us. So if you wouldn't mind answering that, that would be great. And I will share the results momentarily. But let's get to what you all came here for. Central Park. On the left, you'll see a vertical map of the entire park. Where we're visiting today is outlined by a blue rectangle. The ramble um, is in the middle of the park uh, between uh, around the 70s or so. And we'll enter from Central Park West. We can see the area magnified in the middle of this screen. If the ramble, if you don't know, is a woodland. It's one of the three woodlands we have in the park. It's 36 acres and when you combine the acreage of the other two woodlands, they comprise about 90 acres in the park, which is over 10% of the park. The people who created or designed Central Park, particularly Frederick Law Olmsted and Calvert Vox, used the language picturesque landscapes to describe these woodland areas. Picturesque partly because of um, I guess just the beautiful natural views that they provide, but I think literally resembling pictures or resembling paintings. And that's what I wanna to emphasize today because in my opinion and in the opinion of the designers of the park, these woodlands provide some of the most beautiful vistas you'll see in the park. And they really thought of these areas as the picture, if you will, the picturesque areas that people would come see. So I hope this walk conveys that. And you'll see our route today begins on Central Park West by the Natural History Museum or the Museum of Natural History and will snake around uh, the network of uh, trails and paths that make up the ramble. You can see we're not gonna touch it all today. Um, and I guess what you can really tell from here is just how um, confusing it can be to, to navigate around the ramble. This is intentional. I know it can maybe be a little frustrating if you're trying to find your way, but it is the opposite of Manhattan's grid system. You can see on the margins of the map here, 
78th Street, East 77th Street. It's very easy to get around, which I love. But the ramble provides sort of a psychological break from the order and efficiency that you have in the city and invites you to walk around and get lost. And that's what I love about it. So here we are on Central Park West. This is the Beresford in the background. I want to set the stage. We're in the middle of the city. There are noises, there are cars, and we're going to depart from that now. And here we are entering. It's not a named gate. It's an entrance that was added later in the park's history and will already be greeted um, with some foliage here by this golden tree. And this tree is cool because these um, almost look like dead leaves. Um, the brown things that are hanging off this, but if you look closely, you see that they're actually seeds. They're these three-sided bell-shaped seeds that the tree produces. And we get a closer look at the foliage here. Returning to our poll, I will share the results now. And 52% of our attend uh, attendance today are from New York City. And we have guests from elsewhere in the United States and New York State and six people from outside the United States as well. So thank you all very much for attending. If you don't want that on the screen, you can X that out. Okay. Still a lot of green. I took these last week. So um, there's still some green, but we get some beautiful colors already. Some yellow on this tree by us. And I wanted to read this uh, message from my colleague. There is comfort to be found in trees, a reminder that life continues and is beautiful. I very much feel this as I'm walking through the park and I see nature is as beautiful as ever. And I really am grateful that, we, that uh, I have access to this park as a respite. And venturing into the park, we're, we're venturing far, farther and further away from the city noises. They start to become distant and we'll see even more vibrant fall colors like this ash tree that's producing these yellow leaves. And what's amazing about this time of year is that even the ground is nice to look at. I found myself pausing and just kind of staring at my feet at the beautiful array of colors carpeting the ground here. And it's gonna get very confusing to follow along once we're in the woodlands because of how many twists and turns there are. But I hope this gives you an idea. We've walked into the park and on our next stop, we're gonna cross a bridge and be transported into a whole new world. And this is that bridge, Oak Bridge it's called. This was one of the original bridges in Central Park. It decayed after many decades in the 20th century and it became a more nondescript um, utilitarian bridge when it was rebuilt in during the Great Depression, but actually in the last decade, in 2009, um, this bridge was redone to look exactly like it uh, did in the 19th century, but this time it's made actually of aluminum and steel, so hopefully it will be with us for a very long time. And in the distance, we see a mist-covered midtown, and this will be our last glimpse of the city, a reminder that we're in New York City, because in a few steps, we'll be in a place that looks like the Catskills or the Adirondacks. And walking across the bridge, I noticed a couple of huge koi fish swimming around. Just another reminder that we're in uh, a really naturalistic area. And here we are in the Ramble proper. Now that we've crossed the bridge, we see Chambers boat landing, a boat landing that um, gives you access to the water here. And another um, psychological transition here. We're going to venture into this ancient looking stone arch. This one doesn't have a name. It, we just call it the rustic arch. And uh, this was built as, a, I think, another, um, yeah, like another transition for you. But it also is just this amazing piece of architecture that makes everyone curious as to why this is here and what lies beyond it on the other side. And you can imagine people in the 19th century coming here with the same sense of curiosity as to what this woodland is doing in the middle of New York City. Um, but you'll see that um, the tree line is much less mature and much smaller in this photograph from the 1860s. And because of that, I think 
it's fair to say we're in a, like a really great peak of the park because the vision for the park that the designers had in the 19th century is now fully realized and we can enjoy this, this really magnificent woodland. So we're in the Ramble proper now and just beyond that rustic uh, arch, we'll find ourselves in an area that does not resemble a city whatsoever and the noises of taxis and buses has been replaced by chirping birds, some acorns falling and hitting rocks or branches rustling in the wind. And we're surrounded by fall foliage now or the beginnings of it at least. And I shared another historical image, a similar takeaway from the last photograph is just how much this area has changed. However, what I think is astounding is that in just a few years of construction, the people who designed the park and did the construction work to create the park really transformed the landscape pretty quickly into something um, that really resembles a, a mountain range, certainly not the middle of Manhattan. And as we're walking around, there are reminders everywhere that despite it looking like a naturally occurring landscape, this is better thought of as a garden or a man-made landscape. And you can see some pruning on the left here on this tree. There's, it's amazing because there's an art or there's a lot of work that needs to be done to make a place look like it is untouched and natural. And, and making sure the trees are healthy and safe for visitors is part of that work. And you can see one of the arborists that works um, with us at the Conservancy um, checking on the health of a tree perhaps inspecting it for pruning. And we're deep in the ramble now. We see all sorts of colors. This staghorn sumac has red, orange, and yellow all in the same plant. And depending on the time of day you come, you'll see different colors because of the way the light's hitting it. And I love this plant because although it's a native plant to New York and North America, the, the shape of the leaves and the compound leaves it has kind of looks like a palm tree to me. So it, it kind of conveys a, a tropical feeling. And this whole area is so diverse um, with different trees and shrubs that um, it's, it's really fun to walk around and encounter dozens and dozens of different species. And I mentioned picturesque before. I emphasize that word because it's the language that the designers use to, descri to describe this landscape. Um, but I, I often reflect on this when I'm walking around the woods because we, you know, we have paintings like this Asher Durand painting, Kindred Spirits from 1849, that celebrates nature. In the United States, there was a movement, the Hudson River School of Art, that began in the 1830s and 40s that celebrated the splendor of the American wilderness. And this makes sense, landscape paintings inspired by nature, but Central Park in many regards is inspired by paintings. And the designers wanted to kind of recreate and capture some of the glory from these paintings and views like this, just past that sumac, we get this sweeping view um, that focuses our eyes on the lake, this water that runs down this rocky hill and to me, it really does remind me of a painting you might see in the Metropolitan Museum of Art, um, which is where that uh, Asher Durand uh, painting lives and where that image is from. And you'll see some of the um, construction work that's been done in this area as well. I mentioned there's a lot of upkeep to, to make this place look beautiful. Um, there was a five-year restoration that ended in 2018 we did and there was a lot, a lot of work done and part of that was just remaking the paths and you can see where we were standing here, there was once a concrete path that was replaced by these boulders that give it more of a naturalistic wild feel. There are also trails that aren't marked on the maps or these wood chipped areas there. Um, they were blocked off during our visit because um, of uh, resealing of the adhesive that bonds these um, wood chips together. But these are really cool because they provide everyone access to um, um, areas that are even more shrouded in plants and gives you a feeling that you're hiking almost. And these, um, because they're bonded together, they, they stay put for a lot longer. And if you use a wheelchair, um, you're able to access these quite easily, which is great. 
and walking around, we don't really even need to be on one of the trails because we couldn't go on it. It's closed off. But even on the paths, you're really immersed in it. There's a lot going on in this image. And what really grabbed my eye here were these burls, these big growths you see on this tree are known as burls. These are benign growths. They don't affect the health of the tree necessarily. And it could be an indicator of a number of stresses, maybe a parasite in the tree or a fungus growing in the tree, or perhaps just a spontaneous uh, genetic event. Um, and it might look a little unsightly on the outside. You might have seen these and wonder what they are, but um, they're actually beautiful on the inside and they are prized by woodworkers because of the almost marbling effect that occurs inside these growths. And walking around the ramble, we're approaching Tupelo Meadow, which is the going to be the final destination of our walk, but I just wanted to share a couple beautiful fall images here. Um, and like I said, depending on the time of day you come, you get all sorts of colors. The light was hitting this red tree, really highlighting it. And there are images like this that will shock you, or maybe not shock you, but uh, I'm constantly surprised that if you go half a mile in either direction, you're gonna be in the middle of, of a busy avenue. And yet here you would never know it and you can't even hear it. And so here we are um, approaching Tupelo Meadow. And at this point, I wanted to ask one more question of you all, if you wouldn't mind sharing. Uh, I just wanted to get some feedback on what you think is most interesting about uh, our walks. I know they're short programs, but I try to touch on a number of different subjects in the 15 minutes we have. And it's helpful to know um, what you find interesting and what we can maybe add more of in the future. So if you don't mind sharing, that would be great. And we're at Tupelo Meadow. I'll go back just a second just to show you. It's in the middle. You can see where the word the ramble is. Right where that text lies, that is Tupelo Meadow. It's a wide open field in the middle of this dense woodland. So it's a place that naturally draws visitors to explore. And as we come upon Tupelo Meadow, we see some people playing in the lawn. We see leaves everywhere. And um, it's also a great spot for birding because um, the wide open area gives you, um, you know, quite a bit, bit of space to see and you can see for quite a distance. We've walked across Tupelo Meadow now and we'll see uh, these London plane trees on the left, these trees planted in a line. You can see these are really distinct from the design of the ramble. The ramble isn't really planned. It's sort of just like a wild array of trees growing everywhere. You can see the London plane trees in a line. And that's a clue to us that these were added at a different point. These were actually planted in the 20th century. And um, in this point during the Robert Moses area, there was a tendency to plant trees in kind of a straight line, which is just a different design philosophy, but it gives this area a nice feel, I think. And you can do a number of things in Tupelo Matter. You could just play in the field in those leaves like those kids were doing, or you could explore some of the down trees that are nearby. This log has a fungus growing all over it, which I think is great. I mean, it's, it's taken decades to learn how to manage a woodland. It's very difficult in the middle of a city to create a out of thin air, really a thriving ecosystem. And one of the ways we've found success in doing that is just leaving some things be if, they, if they're not in the way. If, the, if this log can just stay off the path, um, let it decompose, let it enrich um, the environment. You'll get more insects, you'll get more birds, and then this will break down and make the soil even healthier. If you don't want to explore fungi, then you can also just sit on one of these nice rustic benches that lines Tupelo Meadow. And that's blanketed in these golden leaves. This would be like, an amazing spot to just stop and read or just stop and look at the leaves. And I'm always encouraging you all to stop and smell the roses because I think that's how you get the most out of Central Park is just pause and, and appreciate the landscape that you're in. And in doing so, I just wanted to talk about the Tupelo tree. Uh, I was talking to someone earlier today and they were saying, oh, I thought it was like a Mr. Tupelo that this was named after or something. No, it is named after the Tupelo tree, also known as the Black gum tree. It's this massive tree. You can see here it's yellowish green at the moment. It turns a number of amazing colors in the fall. 
it's one of the most prized fall foliage tree because oftentimes you can see red, yellow, orange, and even the purplish color all on the same tree. And uh, because it's formed sort of a centerpiece in this meadow, um, it's in, informally uh, given the name for this area. And you can see it from one more vantage point here. I wanted to wrap up on what I thought was a, a really beautiful image. I think when you're rushing through the park, you might just go by this and say, oh, it's just another tree. But if you look closely, not only the, the color and the foliage that's emerging uh, in the tree here, you can also see the zigzagging branches that go in every such direction and the multiple trunks that provide this tree with the really wide, massive canopy that it has. And, um, you know, it's, a, it's an important tree. Um, I think there's a couple of amazing trees in the park that really command your attention, and this is one of them. And uh, I think it's appropriate to say this is like the centerpiece of the ramble. Um, and yeah, that's, that is going to be the end of our walk here. I just wanted to leave this image up so you can soak it in. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this brief uh, foray into the ramble. Like I said, there's 36 acres, so there's really a lot going on here. And to wrap up, I wanted to remind you one more time, um, our registration process has been simplified for the better. You'll sign up for next week's if you'd like to join us and you'll be good going forward. So every week you'll get another email that um, sends you a link so you don't have to sign up every week. Uh, and thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Your support means a lot. I also wanted to plug on one more program. We have a, um, a presentation, a virtual presentation at 3 p.m. today. If you're interested, my colleagues will drop the link in the chat. This um, program uh, will go over the conservation of statues in the park. So if you wanna learn more about the work we do to um, preserve the artwork that exists in the park, you'll definitely want to check that out. It's a 45 minute program at 3 p.m. today. Thank you again. Please log on to our website. Um, you can use the hashtag MyCentralPark to uh, share your story. We'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, you can also go to some of our social media um, accounts on various platforms. And if you miss one of our weekly walks or you want to see past walks or other programs that we do, they're uploaded on our YouTube channel, Central Park NYC. So you can check those out there. You can also download some content on our website, like the Zoom background I'm using now, or a number of other resources. Oh, I got distracted. I just saw a giant heron fly by the window. Got to make it to the park if, you're, if you can. Um, anyway, uh, thank you so much. We'll see you next week. I won't be hosting. My colleague Ryan will be hosting a walk of the blockhouse. But please join us if you can. Thank you again. And from the Conservancy, stay safe and be well. <laughs>